I want to give you guys a slug update because we posted a video about the slugs and the beer. So let me show you, if you didn't see the last video, what it looks like. So that's where we are. Now, this has been in the ground for a couple of days, so my guess is it's time to refresh the beer. And we're not drinking right now, so we have actually have beer in our fridge that we can just give to the slugs. But it's been amazing. Like, pre-putting the beer in the ground, we were killing 20, 25 slugs a day. And if it had rained, even more. It rained yesterday, and I came out here, and, and Don got one, and I got two. And that's it. That's all that we have seen. So I definitely think it's ugly to have the solo cups in the yard. I mean, it's not very attractive, but getting rid of those slugs, I don't care. So um, let's dump these into a bowl or like a plate and see if we can really see what we got in there. Okay, I don't know. This might be a total fail, but hang with us. Let's just see. Actually, why Dawn is going in and getting a bowl let me just kind of show you where the rest of the garden is right now because we're in that time where like we've seeded a lot of stuff and so you, everything that's out is the same stuff that's been out from the winter garden but we do have a lot of seeds in the ground and we're working on something really exciting that you're going to get to see on sunday because we are expanding our garden so let me just kind of give you a quick walk through these are all of our garlics that we got into the fall This is one of our brassicas, but of course, I don't know which one because when I sow seeds, I don't label anything. I know better. I know, I know, I know. That's one of my goals is to get better. This is going to be pinto beans, but they're not up yet. I replanted some of the kales just a little bit closer together to make some room. These are the famous uh, Swiss shards from the square foot gardening experiment. And then these are going to be edamames. This is where they grew last year. We're actually doing that again here. There's some lettuces. I'm gonna move those. That's an onion. Some more of our brassicas. And then if we go over here, these lettuces, I keep cutting them and making salads and they just keep coming right back. And I have to say, this is, you know, a really beautiful plate with the different colors and the different types of leaves. It's just so wonderful. I wish I had grown more. I mean, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine little heads, if you count that one over there in the corner. And that's enough easily for me and Don to have an entree salad, but then you have to wait. So really, we need a succession plan. These are our onions that all went in the bed. You got a bowl, hun? Yeah, let's see what we got. Let me, I'm just going to give them a quick tour of what's growing. So do you mind pulling them out? These are those broccolis from the broccoli experiment we did a few weeks back. And of course they were covered in the radishes, but now they're exposed. These are those experimental carrots. I forgot about them and found them in the cups, like at the very beginning of the year that I transplanted. I wasn't sure they were going to do anything just because they say you can't transplant carrots. And that is more garlic. Look at our potatoes. I mean, some of these are just really doing great. The potatoes are planted in with blueberries and our cabbages. These cabbages are really getting a slow start. They've been in here for two months and they are, this is the biggest one right there. So I don't know. That's not been our experience with green cabbage, but maybe that's true for red. Those are all potatoes. Don't they look good? All right, let's see what Mr. McAllister has found. This is really gross. How gross? It's gross. Wait, wait, wait. Did you dump them all? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me get this position. Looks totally fine. So this is everything poured in. You can see a lot of little critters. A lot of, I guess, flea beetles in there. Not just slugs. What did you want to do, hon? You wanted to pour the liquid out? Some of it. Let's see if I can just All right. So while he's doing that, I have to say, you guys have left us some really amazing comments. We are having the most fun getting to know you guys and learning from you. And I would just say, if you leave us a comment, like let us know where you live or if you're not comfortable with that, like what zone you're in. It's just kind of interesting to see where people are. We've had people from all over the world comment. 
and it seems like slugs are there is a bee by my head it seems like slugs are a really universal problem so we're so happy that this last video was helpful and we're thrilled to be able to kind of do a follow-up video and most importantly excited that it seems like the beer worked don't you think definitely so i poured out accidentally at least 20 slugs yeah and that's not just the slugs i think those are flea beetles but somebody with more experience could tell me man that's a lot good job allagash we're gonna fill it back up and we're gonna do it again. If you're not sure if you have slugs or any of these critters, what I would really suggest is either go out at night with a flashlight, you can see them well then, or for me, I've had the best results just when it's after a rain, just going out there when it's right after a rain and everything's really, really wet, that's when we have found the most. But like I said, once we put out this beer, a drastic, drastic reduction. And so I'm hoping that some of my seedlings will actually have a chance to survive in that bed because you might remember, we've lost a lot of broccoli seedlings. They just couldn't get off the ground because they were munched on so aggressively. Now I feel like we should do like a slug taste test. Like do slugs like Allagash White better than they like Budweiser? Is there like a slug beer of choice? If we were to do a Guinness versus a pale ale versus a Hefeweizen, you know, like have like a beer slug champion. I don't know. I'm kind of a foodie. So this would definitely be in my wheelhouse of things to do. So let us know if you think we need to have um, a beer slug taste off in our garden <laughs> this year. But anyways, there he goes. My understanding is that it's the hoppiness of the beer that they're smelling, and that's what they're attracted to. So if that is true, it would seem like the pale ales and those hoppier beers would actually attract slugs more effectively than just, say, a Pilsner. So, I don't know. It's something to think about, but we're going to take our feedback from you. Leave us a comment what you think. And don't forget, Garden Tours every Sunday behind the scenes every Thursday, just like this one. And this Sunday we've got something really special because we are expanding our garden. Don's been working really hard. I'm not sure we'll have everything done, but we are gonna have something really fun to show you. So we'll see you then, bye. Last time, maybe part of why we had such good luck was we offered a blessing to the slug gods. So I think that you should offer another blessing. Slug gods, we offer you yet another Allagas White. Please get rid of these vermin for us. Amen. Amen.